Okay, everybody, and up now we have Epicness. Uh, Epicness is going to be playing on the Xbox 360 in any percent run of The Legend of Spyro, a new beginning. Uh, first things first, let me wish you good luck, Epicness. Thank you so dearly for that. Thank you very much. And how does um, it feel to be bringing this series back to Spyrothon? This is the first time we've had The Legend of Spyro run here in quite a while. Is it exciting for you? <laughs> yeah, very much so. I know that there's a lot of folks that have expressed interest, uh, but, you know, haven't been any instances of it, like you said. So uh, being able to have that is a bit of an honor in a sense, yes. We're excited to have you on. Uh, best of luck on your run and whenever you're ready. All right. Thank you. All right, everybody, get ready to cozy up because it is a bit of a long one, and I'll try to keep up with chat uh, if you have questions. Uh, feel free to shout out any funny enemy names you see, too. Uh, but with all that being said, uh, time starts in three, two, one, go. All righty, so, I mean... They already kind of got a lot of the general gist of what Legend of Spyro is out in the interview. Kind of just going to start off like this game uh, starts off kind of simply, but it ends up having a lot of like micro movements and stuff. We'll focus like this first area is kind of just like a tutorial level and everything. But you'll notice like the movement just being a lot crisper perhaps compared to previous um, runs if you've seen it but uh, the charge is of course again going to be like the crucial uh, movement thing it's a bit stiffer perhaps uh, than in the original trilogy but with some camera turning and the fact that you can just like pivot with it by like jumping and resetting it at any point mixing that in with just like stopping and turning occasionally with your regular walk like you still have plenty good control in that sense. Grounded movement is, of course, going to be faster as a result. Going through this little tunnel here, you can kind of get a sense of, like, maybe the range that uh, turning has when you know where you're going and everything. Fairly standard. And then for, you know, combat, we're going to just start off with... We have only like our most basic uh, moves right now. So it's kind of just like, the main goal is like getting all the enemies like grouped up, get a bunch of extra damage in that way by like hitting multi-targets. Normally when you're playing casually, you would like fling enemies in the air for like free single target damage. But you know, it takes a lot of time to do that. And you know, that prevents you from keeping low to the ground to like switch between your air and ground attacks to keep your DPS up. So I'm kind of just like watching. I saw like I did three hits on that. Each of these dies in four hits. I hit that last enemy with the back of the third hit. Don't want to like overmash. Otherwise you end up doing some of those melee attacks that only really swing uh, down because they do not, like, hit the sides to get that extra damage. Now we have Flame, which, you know, it's just going to be, like, some supplemental damage. Uh, and you kind of just go around trying to keep the enemies at bay, trying to use the Flames to get that extra damage, or to stun them, have a lot of bodies to keep track of, either, like, hitting a bunch of people at once for, like, you know, chunks of damage or you're like single targeting down and going, you know, a lot of adaptability and like just intermixing between, you know, whatever tools that you happen to have available. So that's kind of like the crash course. Oh, yes. That's what I meant, by the way, when I said if you if you notice any funny names, the enemy names are random. So <laughs> I always try to catch one or two good ones. Uh, now... Most runs before have always just been, like, trying to do that kind of, like, micromanaging, optimizing of, uh, 
combat, but right there was a quick little instance of the strafe jump, which is a technique that I found a couple years ago. Uh, and I figure I'd play the game casually again. And <laughs> it's really weird because, like, honestly, like, it's not that much. It's one of those blink and you'll miss it things. Effectively, it ends up acting as a triple jump. There's, like, a strafe lock on uh, thing, kind of like you know, Z-targeting uh, an Ocarina of Time where Spyro gets some dodge moves. And uh, there's a way to engage that while in air and then do a dodge move and the game still thinks that you're grounded for a short period of time. So essentially you get like three, maybe three and a half jumps if you're counting the dodge itself as a little bit of a directional boost. Uh, and when that was introduced, it actually, like, saved, I want to say maybe a little under, like, 10 minutes or so. And there's a good handful of new, uh, what? Oh, okay. I was, <laughs> I was like, there's always one that gets away. But there's a handful of really spicy jumps that, uh, I found in the last few months, now that I have a bit more time and whatever. I'll, I'll be pointing out later on. Uh, the other thing you'll be noticing me doing, both in combat and in movement, is these air attacks. Now, what the hell? Whoa, this is a... Okay. It tried to put me back to where the, <laughs> the vine was, but the vine wasn't raised. Oh... Uh, Legend of Spyro moment. Um, anyways, the air attack was always known to give you a little bit of a boost forward uh, and upwards. Um, but it wasn't really utilized nearly as heftily as it could. I practically do it at the end of like all of my movement chains when I can. Uh, like this one, for example. It helps me like just get that little bit of extra oomph to either, like, catch a ledge or, you know, extend a glide a little bit further than I need to. Uh, and just also having that directional um, oomph as well, like, helps you, like, correct your jumps. You can interrupt certain jumps, etc. Uh, this whole, like, section here, we're going, like, back to, like, essentially Spyro just learned, like, oh, he's dead. That's what he learned. He learned that he's dead. Which, you know, very startling. Let's keep trying. Uh, but not too big of a deal. The bigger deal is that he's a chosen purpley boy and this elder dragon is going to teach him a thing or two. But we have to get back inside the temple first, which requires pushing these statues, which normally there's like two bouts of them. And uh, this is the second one that you get to after the Elder Dragon uh, leads you up here. Um, but you can do a strafe jump off of one of those spider enemies to just kind of get up here earlier. You know, I'd always wanted to read e Dragon. I figured it probably fit a similar vibe. I would much prefer being the dragon in that sense. Uh, this gives... Hold on, there's a funny little jump here I want to point out. So there's an enemy behind here used for a cutscene, now it's used for a skip. Similar kind of thing, you go back and do a loop around there, or whatever. There's a lot of instances like that in terms of level design where uh, you can take advantage of the strafe jump. It's a little unfortunate because the game is admittedly, like, the biggest problem is that the game has, like, a good bit of linearity and tall invisible walls. Um, so there's a bunch of instances where you might think uh, something could be possible, uh, but then you get turned down heftily, uh, unfortunately. But there's still some cool stuff to be had and a lot of interesting leads. Oh, we also cloned Ignitus there. That's his name. Not that it's important. Uh, it's anyway. You can see, like, with those enemies dropping down from the ceiling and everything, just how quickly your focus um, in terms of damage spreading 
Like, here's another good instance. Try and get them to, like, circle around you, but there's also a little bit of, like, risk-reward in that. Because, you know, they can always, um, just aggro you and just deal a bunch of damage. That was a bit slower than I would have liked, um, you know. But oh well. Using breath to cover landings and whatever. Just trying to keep that damage up, but also keeping the enemies at bay. Any plot skips? Um, there is a funky thing, if you mean like... <laughs> yeah, there's something that kind of messes with the lore. I mean, you could always just skip cutscenes, that's a plot skip. If you really think about it. So now we're going to get into uh, a new beginning's other favorite thing to do, which is kind of like having these bits of downtime that diversify the gameplay in a sense. Uh, although this is just like kind of a lengthy tutorial of uh, Ignitus telling Spyro of his abilities, which we already partially know about or could figure out ourselves. These enemies in particular are really obnoxious because they actually run away from you much sooner than you would expect and like a little bit outside of your flame range. They give you a lot of time, but they're tricky to pin down. They also don't really move in the way you'd expect them to do. Okay. You'd think going at them head on. All right, there you go. Kind of have to cut them off. Oh, you awaken my hopes once more. Anyway, this period of time gives me a little bit uh, to explain some of the retoolings in this compared to the rest of the series. Uh, something I'll be paying decent attention to throughout the run is the gem system, which they've been reworked to essentially be like this resource system to like keep you in the fight and everything. You've got red gems that equivalent to your health, uh, green gems equivalent to magic, and then blue gems are going to be the most curious one probably, um, since they're necessary for like upgrading your elements to give them like better utility or range or damage, what have you. You did it. Uh, it's time to move on. Practically all of the gem sources like give you a little bit of each. Uh, but you have to watch out because with this being a PS2 game, I don't know if we'll, I'll be able to point it out, but they can only like render so many gems at once. And you're trying to get as many of the blue ones for upgrading um, an endgame element that's going to make a lot of the fights much easier uh but it's possible like while you're getting these gem clusters uh that other ones despawn from other enemies dying and dropping them this way oh one uh we'll get to the best breath uh towards the end of the run don't you worry it's <laughs> it's one of the most notorious things about this game, honestly. Um, in fact, we end up saving most of our upgrade stuff for that, so that will be curious. Now you're ready to proceed. Uh, but anyways, it's possible for some of those gems to either, like, despawn. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Whatever. There's a thing where you can knock this guy forward a little bit more initially. But he got knocked down instead, so I have to concede to being a little slow. Now we're gonna get this fireball thing. It's gonna act as a ranged projectile, but for the most part, we're going to just be blowing it up in enemies' faces for good DPS. Which we'll see in the, uh, the ice level when stuff gets real. Shoot. Having to hit these guys over this wall is 
kind of obnoxious sometimes because you have to like make sure you're not just like mashing out the fireball you have to like actually <laughs> arc it this way oh mob one yeah, there's a lot of just instances in this game where they break the pace to like either do this or like an auto scroller or something. Um, unfortunately, there aren't really any ways to skip those. There is an interesting little way to speed this up. Is I left some purple gems which contribute to Fury, which is essentially just like a super screen wipe move. And these enemies that like act as the you know, completion condition for this tutorial. They only spawn once you have Fury, but the way it works in practice is since there's a little bit of delay between when enemies drop gems and you pick them up, uh, it will spawn another set of small apes typically beforehand. And that tripped up a lot of people on casual playthroughs. They'll just like burn their Fury thinking uh, they finished it, but. Uh, then get a rude awakening, unfortunately. Yeah. No, that's understandable. I think a new beginning, like casually speaking and everything, um, it peaks towards the middle, uh, and the beginning is really bad. <laughs> or at least it's very sluggish. Like, a New Beginning's best strength probably is its uh, world building. Like, I think each Legend of Spyro game, um, you know, has its own individual strength. But I can certainly understand the concur there. Oh, yeah, doubly funny. Yeah, these are, like... I guess the first instance of like a free flight level it kind of gives me the vibe that it's like almost like a 3d bullet health thing they were going for um but like with it gives you the impression that it's kind of open but it's like incredibly on rails once we get to the ice thing we get some pretty decent early paced uh, gameplay though good mix of a handful of jumps because for whatever reason the ice level just does not have nearly as stingy of invisible walls. Blanked out during these segments. Yeah. I don't know. To each their own I will admit that I this game was uh, a guilty pleasure for me, like, many years ago when I first got it, when it came out. I'm trying to think if there was anything in regards to the general movement. Oh, right, so the air attack stuff. We're going to see that uh, a little bit more as the run progresses, but... A way that you can use that, um, that wasn't utilized too well, is that you can actually interrupt your jumps with it, which effectively what that means is that you can either reach certain heights sooner, and you can, you can do like smaller increments of height. Um, so like say you wanted to do not a something between a single jump and a double jump. You can like mash out your double jump, but before you get the full height of your double jump, you put out an air attack. And so essentially you just get like incredible control over your your height and your air time, which ends up uh, cutting down a lot of just waiting for Fro to land. Anyway, we're getting back into the thick of it now. Gonna have like a string of skips coming up here, but first we gotta kind of deal with. Frieza is a desolate little bit of weird camera and some physics.
and stuff. So this kind of has a little bit to do with the micro positioning as well. You really want to like get to that tree as fast as you can so that it's possible for the snowball to just like careen down on his head and then just like roll off into nowhere's land. Uh, and you have to like take your turns carefully, get the snowball into the enemy so that they kind of get flung up and don't end up like attacking the snowball out from under you. All right, here we go, strafe jump time. So, so much for that encounter. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. This seems to be, um, something that fills a lot of people's memory as far as the game goes. Sorry. Just trying to think where I want to take everything right now. Alright, this one we don't actually even want a strafe jump for. It's a little weird. Because uh, there's like this giant invisible wall, but then like a damaging wall as well. And that's not what you want. Oh. There we go. For whatever reason, uh, the knockback on that will push you over uh, given enough time. Right. Swerving through these little zigzags. Damn. Not getting the first two Legend of Spyro games. Yeah, we will be seeing um, Dawn later on. Ooh, look at that. We got some poetry spitting on stream too now. <laughs> yeah, if you couldn't tell, um, this game is, is, oh shoot, okay, well that's not just gonna, so there's a little instance of the fireball, I guess. The... Um, or I might just be stuck, holy crap, never had <laughs> such an ambush in my life. Oh, goodness, that was the willow, the freezer, that was that enemy's name. Man, how long have I been running uh, A&B? Okay, so, yeah, I can talk about that. Although, first I want to point out, I quickly just got uh, another elemental uh, breath. Those kind of ended up carrying over a little bit from a hero's tail and enter the dragonfly, as I said. Although, they kind of act as... Wait. Did I... Did I not do the snowballs? Do <laughs> oh gosh, I'm sorry. I'm having too much fun with you guys. Alright, hold on. Serious time for a sec, apparently. Yeah, so the, the breaths, you know, they have their different uh, utilities. Like, the electricity is going to be our most noteworthy simply because it's able to fling enemies away from us like non-mandatory ones that would be in our path as well as sling enemies off cliffs for environmental hazards um ice is ice is kind of useful uh although it's not going to get to be seeing any use in the speed run simply because like most of its utility is just in making enemies slower uh, it does have some high damage, but you have to, like, really upgrade it a lot. And at that rate, um, Earth is going to be our go-to. So this is one of the more elaborate little... Oh, that guy got away. Little setups for a fight, because you have to lure those little skeletons over and then, like, shimmy yourself so you get them in like almost a circle around these guys so that the the whole like radius of the, the firebomb hits a 
want to try and use as much of your magic for... Oh my god, they blocked so much. Alright. There's no spawn the beast. Yeah, it seems about right. Alright, we kind of have to uh, bullcrap this one. Unfortunately. Because most of my magic got eaten up there. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, I hit him with a fireball there, uh, which I mentioned about flames being good for supplemental damage and that, for the most part, you just want to do fireballs uh, since they have the best DPS. But you do want to try and hit enemies with flame for the end because it just has a faster death animation. So definitely some more mindfulness there. Oh, we're actually going to have a brief little um, <laughs> preview of an upcoming game. Uh, in just a second here. And then I'll finally get around to that question uh, Jinj asked me. Sorry to be so scatterbrained. You kind of have to be to keep up with um, some of what is thrown at you here. Alright. So... As long as they don't bum rush you too hard. There we go. Look, we're playing a uh, season of ice. It's it's cold and and isometric. You got it. All right. That's that's the best joke I have for the day, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Oopsie. Okay, we're fine. Alrighty. So, Jinj was asking about how long I've been running uh, New Beginning for. So, I think what's been really interesting about this is just, like, seeing how it works compared to its sequel, The Eternal Night. That one I've been running for almost seven years. Uh, but this I've only really gotten into the last maybe two months. Um, there's a lot more like elemental uh, weaknesses and stuff, but on the flip side, um, like, okay, I don't know if I mentioned it, but they are in the same engine, and Eternal Light is kind of like just built off of the same base moveset as New Beginning, uh, but it introduces a lot of these elementally based uh, movement options that end up influencing things a lot more than you might expect, especially when you're looking at it from a speedrun sense. Nice. Yeah, that was nice. Normally those skeleton guys uh, meander off. Uh, I'll talk about how that influences my perception of this in a moment. But uh, right now, I have to use a not-too-well-known secondary effect of the Fury attack, which is that Spyro gets these, like, extra little, like, effects based on the element that you had equipped. So, like, for fire, you get these, like, these footprints of flame uh, that kind of, like, deal extra damage to nearby enemies. Um, normally, like, most enemies are grounded, and you can just kind of get it while you're doing melee damage, which melee damage is also increased. Uh, but since it's not the case for those floating ghouls, uh, you kind of have to wedge yourself underneath them, and just, like, tiptoe between them. Speaking of tiptoeing, there's... A trigger in the middle of that room there for like a big fight if you just go for that one crystal and <laughs> I have to wonder if that's intended like for you to be able to get around that or not what okay I guess that was the spike from from that there yeah 
can see, I also try to take my paths, like, kind of tight, but I do leave a little bit of room for Spyro's head in case he, like, conks on some of this wood. I mean... <laughs> Wait, this is a PG stream. I shouldn't make any, any jokes about wood. Whoopsie. Nimrod. Epic. Okay. Wow, that was smooth. Slipping over the, the fence like that. With the air attack. Like, you didn't... You didn't even see it come out. Passing is mostly... This level has a handful of weird traps like that. Like that fallen... Uh, Falling floor, <sighs> as well as like, there's a handful of places like coming up here where you'd think like you can glide a clot across, but I don't know. There's some directional things with this level that I question. Uh, so as far as version goes, um, I've actually been over the last few months I've made. Uh, Discord for the Legend of Spyro in particular, just since there were a handful of people I knew that were, like, interested in running it, and it was difficult for me to, like, get, um, resources together, or, like, figure out, like, covering three different games and whatever, when there's, like, two different engines and everything, I was just, like, I don't know. And someone had reached out to me with interest, and so... You know, one of the things we have been working on, actually, is uh, loadless timing, so that we can eliminate uh, some of the oddities in regards to, like, uh, the approachability of these games. Oh, I need to level this up. As there are certain versions, particularly with Dawn of the Dragon, where you need like a setup that's like oh hey get the ps3 version that's a hundred dollars uh you know like accessibility was a huge uh concern there uh i still need to like touch up some of the a new beginning speedrun board stuff but we were looking at like having emulators allowed and everything just since like you know Copies are to come there. Also, hello, Jeremy. It's still very much like a work in progress thing and whatever, but it seems that, like, you know, loads are the only thing that are affected, and they have a pretty consistent um, visual cue. A Dawn of the Dragon even has, like, an in-game timer, but there's something funky with that. Hold on. This fight's kind of annoying because they have you kill, like, 20 Dreadwings, and I have to think they expected you to just fling, fling these guys off of here. Because otherwise, this, this is quite, quite the gauntlet for, for starting out. A lot of people say, you know, that um, Eternal Night is difficult, but this game can definitely wallop you as well. It just kind of has better checkpoints. Alright. Just checking between those two spawns there, and getting as many gems from them falling off as we can. Where are we at? Okay. There we go. So just get in a lot of, like, extra uh, gems. With everything just only giving you, you know, like, a mix of gems, you kind of have to go a decent bit out of your way for some upgrading stuff, especially since the last level is very particular. This is that boss I talked about in the 
interview. But you really have to, like, watch the AI and see uh, when he has the shield out and whether he's doing, like, a low sweep or a high sweep. In the second phase, it's not as much of a concern. Uh, we can just kind of die to refill our magic and then um, mostly only does low sweeping attacks. But going into it, there's you kind of have to maybe trade some health to just then be able to go right back in. I really shouldn't have done that. Okay. Okay. There we go. Sheesh. Oh, that's true. A hero's tail definitely does have you uh, die and then like waiting on stuff like that. Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, uh, yeah, that'll work. Sorry, this boss just is pretty intense because he can use, like, certain attacks that will just, like, send you a far bit away and then he does this, like, full body coverage thing where you just can't hit him for a while. It's nasty. But yeah. If you're lucky and responsive, you can stave them off with the fireballs. Oh, right. Okay, so if he does hit you, you have to be careful, because for whatever weird reason, yes, yes. the way fireball works is it actually, like, spawns based on Spyro's, like, jaw location. Uh, what a phrase that is. Um, so... If you slip on ice, Spyro kind of like throws his head back and screams. Um, well, he doesn't scream, but it looks like he screams. And when that does happen, he'll just throw the fireball straight up. So if you are not paying attention, you can just... yeah. No, guys. He said electricity is the spark of life, not... Not the nightlight. Yeah, I don't take any, like, offense to it or anything. Like, it's a very good game to just, like, chill and chat and everything. Just kind of nature of the beast, you know? With uh, electricity being upgraded, though, this ship becomes way more approachable. You got actual, like, range on these enemies and stun them and everything. It'd be nice if, uh, they, we ought to put a mod to give the Dojo Dummies random names, too. You're a quick study after all. Uh, gosh. Regarding some of the dis differences, an eternal night since I started talking about that. This way, oh mob one. Oh, sorry, I thought someone helped me for a second. So I already mentioned that that game has like a handful of more movement options. You kind of have like almost like a Devil May Cry type stinger there. All of the elements end up being used in some sort of fashion. There aren't as many. Uh, of these like long-winded tutorials and whatever you just like have a lot more ways to mix up your approach to both combat and platforming um but it is helpful like the how to put it the micro platforming still carries over greatly between the two games igniters will be pleased I think, uh, we're doing the Fury now. Didn't mention the strat for these guys is to kind of have them... They tend to lunge at you, like, as soon as they spawn. So if you're in the air, you can tend to, like, do a ground pound, and that has multiple hitboxes to it. These guys only have 
like two hits worth of health, so you kind of do that and then see what's straggling. Trying not to leave too many gems uncollected because at that point you're being wasteful. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely would be neat if there was just kind of like a menu thing to head in here and then do this. It wouldn't be too shabby. Uh, I am actually going to pull attention back around now because one of the crazier findings uh, is coming up here in Tall Plains, which generally speaking seems to be a pretty well-liked level, both in terms of its atmosphere. It's got a actually good handful of like Spiral. decently hidden collectibles in the form of just like hidden side paths with gems and stuff. Music, of course. Tall plains was once home to a proud and you have uh, more elaborate terrain with like a little bit of puzzle platforming and more dynamic uh, arenas. But what we're going to do is a very silly strafe jump to get around some very tall walls. We have to get this large guy over here because we're going to be standing on a branch, which odd for whatever reason, has collision on the sides, but not the top. Oh shoot, I had the... Okay, never mind. Uh, really? Okay, so I basically got it, but didn't got it. Um, maybe that position will work. I'm doing a fireball to try and stun them. But we can then kind of like lean into... Set that. Hopefully, get. You have to be really quick as well because the way this ends up working is you're standing on that corner where there's a very tall invisible wall, and you have to have Spyro kind of face a little bit inwards, and he can lock on to enemies in a very small subsection of this hallway. Can I? Okay. There we go, up and over. Alright, and someone was asking about the plot skips earlier. That's the King Quickscope. Man, I'm so cringe, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a llama dude, you free, and uh, He's kind of an asshole to you, but now you don't have to deal with him, and now I have to deal with this. Hold on. I saw this coming. Yo. There we go. <laughs> yeah, Xbox, um, getting back to the versions thing, so, realistically, like, there aren't any, like, version-exclusive, like, mechanics or anything like that. It really is all just loads. Uh, both A New Beginning and Dawn of the Dragon are available on the, um, the Xbox store uh, for pretty cheap. A and B being, uh, this game being $10 and Dawn being 20 which I've seen copies like, respectively being, like, 30 and 80 before. So it's definitely a good pickup, especially with them being like, as fast as they are and everything. There are some, like, weird things with the sound, I guess, but, you know. Alright. Oopsie. Extending the blind. Oh. <laughs> Thought I hit the cutscene there. All right. This fight is definitely chaotic as enemies kind of surround you in a ring, in tiers, and sometimes you want them to run towards you on the lower levels, but for a lot of it, you just want 
to sling them off with. With electricity for that quick kill, which, yes, believe it or not, that will be considered. Okay. So he fell, but he didn't. Alright. Willow Beard Forest Bone. Ah, man. You can kind of, like, do a handful of things to set up these fireballs, but sometimes you just kind of have to aim them off of nothing, like just being approximated to the enemy. Hopefully this guy actually dies on the way down. Nope. But, like, you know, you have... Your air attacks can lead into them because Spyro... There's, like, a mechanic where... He does, like, face enemies or whatever, so that that's kind of more automated. Uh, but when you're fighting a horde, or whatever, that may or may not be to your advantage. Um, so you can do things like, throw, when they're launched in the air from the fireballs or whatever, usually your arc will intercept it, or you can jump up to them and intercept it, or on their landing you can walk up to them. Okay, I need to leave one guy here for positional sake, because need some time to run back over. Darn. And that's why you want to get there sooner. Oh well. This uh, energy wall in particular annoys me a lot. Because you could very... There's a lot of just little collisions that make me think you could clear it, but there's just a giant invisible wall backing it up from behind. Alright. Have a slick little button pushing section here too, actually. A lot of moving parts. So for here, you're supposed to turn on these uh, I guess they'd be considered windmills to get this water flowing that opens a door. But as you do, these enemies spawn. Uh, and actually, you can just kind of reach, reach up here at any given point, but you do have to activate them all just to get everything going. You have these little, like, crevices to avoid there. You have the, the ground town with its, like, big hitbox overlaying some cutscenes here. Whoa. All right. And just kind of watching our health since those, those cannons can be sharpshooters. Okay, nice. That's actually <laughs> an interesting little point to bring up, is that every time you do one of these air attacks, you do have the risk of... Um, Holding the button does this ground pound thing. So if I'm ever, like, over a ledge uh, and end up doing one of those, you could just die. So you really have to just, like, keep your fingers moving and crisp. Nice camera. It's another thing in this game where there's kind of, like, these damage states or whatever, where enemies will become more vulnerable for a bit. Uh, but then they'll, like, start, you know, shielding or whatever. Uh, and that's particularly problematic for these stone guys, as they're extremely resistant during that. Gonna grab a little bit of extra gems just for the safety of it. Lots of stutters and freezes. I'm sorry. Here we go. This is a nice damage spread moment. Alright. There we go. That Fury is a new addition done by me because I don't like it. 
fighting them. Just like getting them all killed. Normally you like try to reserve your fury um, to like have the melee attacks get you some extra damage in. Um, but there really isn't like combat for so long and you're just kind of holding on to that fury for a time. So it's like, eh, I'll try it. Coming up here is an, another oddity in terms of uh, combat um, optimizations. You thought the electricity thing was funky as far as uh, fall damage kills go. This is going to be even funkier. All right, so with that, by timing uh, your air attacks and flame in a particular way, you can kind of wedge yourself underneath an enemy and <laughs> they just stay long enough that they just get instant killed, I guess. Uh, it's like such a marginal thing because the flame only like barely pushes them up but evidently it works, and it saves you a heck of a lot of trouble. As we'd seen, larger enemies can kind of ignore a lot. I get to shoot some baskets real quick. It's a pretty, pretty funny flow to this section. Because you kind of, you know, you roll these around for a little bit, but you get this little bit of anticipation lining these up. So you can send them from like a really, really long way. Pretty surprising. Thankfully, they attract to you better than the snowballs do. Normally, uh, like, there's a gate, a wooden gate that this ends up raising, and you would think maybe there's a way over that, and that kind of brings me back around to the whole, like, Eternal Night and just, like, how much like little changes in the move set affect things like you know with the strafe jump that saved so much time off of some of these levels like that skip i did at the beginning saved like a minute well it would have if i <laughs> was good um but in eternal night there is a technique where you can launch an enemy really high into the air and then bring Spyro to the same level as it. Uh, and there's a similar... There's a similar move in this game, but I haven't been able to replicate that kind of interaction. And if that could happen, then you'd essentially be able to have Spyro jump like... Oh, I don't know. Six times as much and maybe get some out of bounds in. Come on. This is another one of those auto-scrollers technically, but you do have to be on it to get as many gems as you can, because detouring for gems, like I said, Since they don't have too much return in regards to being able to upgrade stuff on the blue gems, uh, you kind of have to scrounge around. Alrighty. 
Oh, we have to be real <laughs> lubby. That's that's someone's uh, pet name for like their spouse or something. <laughs> Why do I talk? Oh gosh. But yeah, they can really hit like a truck. As you just saw, that guy took like a third of my health and got some decent knockbacks. So you gotta watch out that you don't just get chucked off the edge yourself. Uh, they have a few charging attacks where they just become immune to this knockback. And at that rate, then you have to just really get on it to get them off the edge so you can get some of your health back and, of course, the possession too. Like, when that happens during a run, I'll just, like, do whatever I can to, to keep on board, because... Dying here means losing two minutes. What does Spyro randomizer look like? Yeah, wasn't there... I thought I saw someone doing something of that sort. Somewhere else, but I, I can't recall. I'm honestly kind of working off of, like not sleeping for a day or two here, so forgive me if my energy's a little low. Oh wait, I'm already here. That's alright. Well, that was fun. Much rather take that jump safely. For the same reasons I mentioned earlier. Down here fireball just so that they don't mess with me. Darn. I was really cutting that close. There we go. Alrighty. Now this stone sentinel guy, he can definitely be a bit of a trouble maker as well. Although, I wouldn't say to the same extent as the Ice King, because he has a significant blind spot uh, that if you can just maintain within it, then it kind of set. It's like right beneath him, which normally he's got covered pretty well, but when you Fury, you kind of just get lodged in there. Hopefully and staggering without getting knocked away too frequently. Oh shoot, I've got to jump away. I have no health. Unfortunate. Alright, yeah, this is doable. Kind of like spin in synchronization with him. Normally you get a little bit more damage down from the Fury, but uh, decided to be angry and kick me a lot more today. Oh. Alright. I think that's everything I can grab from there. You have subdued the God of the I know I said Ice was not going to do much in the run, but uh, the tutorial sure does. It's, um, <laughs> oddly terrifying. You'll see what I mean, um, we'll hear some of the timers actually tick down, even though I'm thinking I'm playing decently. Pyro, come here. Certainly fire and electricity are nice sidelights, but now, young dragon, you will learn the secrets of ice. A power worthy of the elite. Oh, shoot. There. 
This first part's pretty nonchalant, you know. Getting your... It just lets you <laughs> attack them. Because, like, the whole thing with Tice is just that it lets you slow stuff down. Uh, but these guys, you basically need to do it with. And you need to do it fast, because... Do not have... Okay. Thanks for running that way. Yep. Hear the timer countdown. And I don't think I approached that too terribly. This one's at least a lot more interesting, because the audio, actually, you can kind of listen to and tell spatially where they are. Snap around to where you think their spawn would be. Hello? Alright. Fortunate final spawn. You can also kind of mix up your approach here with like either running in and just like doing the full damage through the ice spears or doing some melee. Whoa. Okay, there it goes. Yes, yes, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna mention that I I thought I was seeing some some drops. Not sure what to make of that. If there is anything to be made of it. Munitions Forge coming up is actually another level, I think. People speak decently of. It actually has a handful of sectors that I think are very, like, clearly, like, within the realm of, uh, you know, the more classic design. Not, like, the full, like, circular, uh, level thing, but... Okay, good to have the confirmation. But you kind of end up going into these areas that are sort of like looping and interconnecting and have you, exactly are you saying, collect several of, you know, whatever item it is that fits. Oh, for real? As far as the hero's tail thing. Pretty bonkers. I don't know, maybe I should toy with that game more. I hadn't... Uh, run into, like, too much, um... Like, enemy interaction. I think I got, like, up to the swamp or so. Okay. It's also a lot of just prioritizing t certain targets in here that, like, lead a pack or whatever, and, yeah, it's supposed to be, like, oh, kind of hard to get to or whatever, but if we just kind of gun straight for them, we can mess them up. Something I'm going to get some good mileage out of in this level is that Fireball actually kind of acts as another, uh, like melee strike, which is useful for these doors, but not for these gems because like more particle effects and lag and potentially losing out on some gems because of that. <laughs> Spyro do be beginning. Be he be he be beginning. Big big beginning. Anyway. This is kind of what I had in mind 
uh, that description I mentioned earlier. Getting in here. Saving some moles. Typical stuff. I think that's all of them. Yeah. Technically, there are other ones you can actually kind of try and route a little bit differently there, but... Yeah. For all the other ones, you just have to get all of them, so I don't, I don't know what the distinction was there. Mommy Dragon? Oh, this is the mommy dragon level. That's true. I forgot. Yeah, the whole the whole thing, the whole thing of glitches. That's what I'll do. I'll, I'll, I've got to think. What's the what's the cutscene where Spark says the fun? I feel like now that you mention it, I'd be robbing people if I didn't show that. Alright. Anyway, bounding across some of the breakable props just to cut a bunch of corners and whatever, you know. Glide is nice for that precision, of course, but all the chaos in the background sometimes you never knew. There's some nice extra gem pickups with not too much delay. Maybe it's a straight jump off that. Oh yeah, I guess. I mean, to some extent, I guess she's a foil of Spiral. But we just got the extreme element I was referring to. So we're actually going to upgrade like both parts of the Earth Breath. Uh, Twice. There we go. It's definitely a hefty chunk, but it ends up being very much worth it since the last level uh, is about as pure of an enemy one. It says it gets no mincing words there. I... Yep, nice. The sloped surface like that, you can kind of glide up it a little bit with the with the air attacks. Okay. That's disappointing. Uh, but we're going to see... I mean, for now, the Earth Breath is just going to be a little bit of a utility thing to hit things from a little further away. Uh, but once we get to the boss, it's going to act as... Incredible single target damage. Um, also, you were talking about being blinded. Uh, this is definitely a photo sensitivity moment. There is a little bit of um, technique in here. Not this sector, but there's kind of like a a midway point that's kind of nifty, and you can swerve to like get a few more shots in for some of these turns and stuff. Um, for the most part, you know. Here we go. So this is nifty because you kind of want to oscillate your speed to hit the back of the cart so that it drops some magic from the crystals and whatever refill and keep the carnage going. Caboose is happening. Yeah, we're having some trouble with the train in this game. It's dead. <laughs> uh, why is he on the train? Because this is some sort of, like, weaponry factory thing. And you gotta... You gotta be efficient. Spirit trap. That's pretty good. 
I mean, we are getting spirit gems after all, so... I'd say you're joke. Tracked. Hey. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway, um, this boss also happens to have the name Nice Place that you can get Spyro Reignited Trilogy from. So that's pretty dope. With it being the end of the line, uh, you can finally get back to a little bit of fun jumping around. Hopefully I don't have too much trollery, as it is with an off-screen enemy. It can be hard to tell if they walk out of your range or not. Oh. Clean. Wow. And that just skips you having to do this whole U-turn to wade the tracks. Happen to, like, glide over... All sorts of minecarts there. Fight off the scorpion. It's a whole mess. Oh. I'm amazed with how large a cone that hitbox is. How I did not sleep. Alright. So yeah, just free in some more of these uh, enslaved moles. Kind of jump over and ignore all the enemies that you can. There's actually some like crazy areas here where you'd think you can do something out of bounds. I just want to show this real quick since. So you can just kind of get up here without too much trouble. Heck, I think you can even, like, jump to it normally, almost. But that doesn't lead to anything impressively. At least so far. Like, there's probably more tankering that can be done, or more, um... more techniques to be found, but just, like, to give the idea that, you know, there's more potential. So this is all also just not out of bounds. <laughs> I mean, it is, but it also, you know, that's kind of the dual frustration. It's like, the walls are very demanding and it's really cool and you can get over them. Um, but man, doesn't really not let you do much sometimes. Alright, so this is kind of the last point we have for health and upgrade gems as well as a very weird little movement chain here to climb the spiral. Okay, I thought I was going to target him. That's okay. We can get up here. There we go! That was pretty slick. Goober. Alright. Yeah, there, that, that, that winding area is just like a whole little playground of funny <laughs> collisions. I love it. Alright, now for this actual steam boss. So, the whole thing with this fight is trying to get the train conductor to turn in towards the center. Uh, during this first phase, he's rather slow, and you can always influence him, but not necessarily guarantee anything. So I like to try and use a Fury and follow him up on the first phase, since really doesn't like to turn, uh, or like it takes a while for it to happen anyway. 
Come on, you gotta start doing it sometime. There you go. Double back. Alright. Do some tight glides around and then get them right on the end. Normally, you know, it's not a very long period that they're down. They keep getting, like, progressively faster and leaving you less and less time to react. There's a hell of a lot of hitboxes going on and whatever, so you kind of just have to be right on it and use that extra range of the, the Earth Blast there. It will just, like, take out, like, a whole health bar instead of, like, normally you'd only maybe be doing little bits. Oh, very nice. Alright. That was pretty clean. Uh, which means I should definitely not be too concerned. Oh. As far as picking up enough of these gems. Slick. Yeah, Spyro Suplex the Train. That's right. That famous scene. Oh, speaking of famous scenes, um, people were asking for Mommy Dragon, so I'll I'll gladly oblige. There she be! Oh, she's already eating my ass. Mom, please. Anyway. Oh, okay. I just remembered the the other funny cutscene. Yeah. I might be able to let that play. I don't want to go on for too long. Probably sh we'll skip out on that, actually. This level's at least very... Uh, pretty as far as, like, a pace breaker. I think these actually get maybe a little bit more heat than they deserve. They're definitely underutilized, or like, not underutilized as in they should be in the game more. Uh, like, like the tooling as far as like what the actual uh, gameplay is. Like I think, you know, you have all these like dodge and roll mechanics and whatever. It seems like it's supposed to be like this whole, you know, clusterfuck thing, which, you know, there is some dodging. Purple frog creature. That actually sounds like something Sparks calls him. Once in a purple thing, I think he calls him. Oh, uh, good times. Good times. I hope everyone has been cozy during this whole process. It's honestly kind of intense keeping up with everything in the game, but there's another side of it that's just like, I don't know, something light on my heart. Oh. <laughs> so much for that PG stream thing I said, huh? Marathon's cancelled, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright, let's be in, in the final stretch here to upgrade the Earth Bomb, which is easily the most overtuned thing I think I've seen. And we'll get plenty of opportunity. To see how potent it is in the Cinder's Lair level. Although first we have to do what is perhaps the most awkward of the um, of the tutorials because you want to kind of fling these enemies into the wall, but with the shape of the cone and everything, you know, it's hard to actually 
actually get a bunch of enemies at once when they're all right in your face, because, you know, that's the point of the code. Less surface area. And then you want to, like, get closer so that you're actually, like, hitting them because, you know, they're surrounding you, so you don't really have the opportunity to get space. Over here. Tutorial doesn't feel useless. That's true, because we have this going on here. The flea. To try not to spawn too many of these, because they do lag the game a little bit. So these tornadoes have both the enormous range of, um, like, they'll, they'll just pick up, like, both of those enemies there, for instance. Uh, they drop gems randomly. They hardly cost any magic. One of them will, like, kill one of these guys. But there's still and optimizations to be had. Because the last level ends up throwing just a lot of boards at you, and you kind of have to keep up with like the spawns and just like coagulating like so many enemies at once that it's ridiculous. Oh hey, I got to show the, the gems despawning. So that's kind of what I was getting at the whole time as far as managing gems on screen. That will be a huge thing in the last level as well, since there will be those kind of just constantly falling falling onto the screen. And you kind of have to end up like collecting those and maneuvering around dealing with the earth bomb having the same kind of like arc and everything. Yeah, no, Spyro does definitely become Doom Guy at the end of this game. There isn't really any escape for these apes. It's just a matter of <laughs> how quickly I can dispose of them, though. There is still a really strange uh, gift in the second half of this level that is what actually ended up like inspiring me to pursue it in the way that I did um, because <laughs> I spent several hours just like toying with the idea it's very obtuse so we'll get there when we get there I don't want to foil everything before it happens Alright, whoops. What happened to my charge? There we go. Ah, okay. Almost conked into that guy there. <clears throat> Alrighty. So this fight starts off simple enough because I can just kind of chuck, um along straight at the big guy and the rest will follow suit but then kind of have these stragglers coming in from the sides it's not so much about like killing you know any particular enemy fastest now you need like the coverage but not like wasting you don't want to have them too dispersed or whatever you can't actually like keep up that point then. So like, okay, there's one over here. Nice. Okay. That would have been nice if that collided with the no so. oh, biggie. Yeah, just with how towering these uh towers are. You'd think uh 
with some of these electric gates that this could just be like a victory lap. Doing some platforming, jumping over some stuff. In the end, but. Ends up being. Wow, oh, those are really, really high. Ends up being a lot more restrictive than one might imagine again. But. We are going to break free uh, one last time. In the end, and we'll get there as we as we pursue this. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard just not to get lost in it. You you kind of like still get that like fuzzy uh, gameplay experience during some of this. It really is, like, a very oddly paced uh, run as a result, but I am very happy and fortunate, I think, with um, some of the findings for it recently. But... There we go. So I ran uh, forward a little too soon, not, like, keeping enough... Uh... Like, you only really need enough to maybe, like, keep, like, two of these Earth Bombs in reserve or whatever. Just so that you can kind of, like, start this, uh... I mean, this is literally a slaughterhouse we got running right now. With the exception of that, like, jumping up sooner just to start this. Sooner? There isn't any other point in the run where you have, like, this much passive damage, so you can just get away with, uh, walking away from some enemies at some points. This not as much, it's just, like, a mild optimization. You can actually reach it, like, see, there's the door, but, um... It's not a speedrun friendly door. <laughs> Even though you can technically jump to it and stuff, it's, uh, I don't know. It's just one of those things where, uh, if anyone had gotten to see how, like, uh, Eternal Light with NG Plus looked, in that category, you kind of can just interact with the level flags in any which order you please. Um, but this is much more strict in that department. Jeez, there's still... Okay. Should be a large guy after this, no? Alright. We're gonna try for the extra swag. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Get a little bit of the shotgun in there for extra damage. Since it flings enemies away and like out of the tornado, or they may slide along and not have the death animation as quickly, uh, unfortunately, that doesn't necessarily speed up things. I mean, it. It does, but in... Only in mild circumstances at the end. Normally I have Earth equipped there to help. Okay. Not a big deal. Just didn't want to get flung off. See, I said flung, I didn't say any, any F words this time that aren't flung. Alrighty. This is a pretty good instance of that kind of like, um, trusting in the, the damage and 
moving along kind of dealio. Do you need to get rid of all three of these little pockets of enemies? But, um, you know, waiting for each to die is slow. Yeah. All right. Damn. I got extremely outplayed. F word is an F word. Word. All righty. We're almost near the end of the uh, most straightforward part of this level. This area is, like, just large enough that, um, you can have some back and forth going on here. Ah, oh, shoot. I figured that this did, seeing that get up animation. Don't know what what took so long for anything to show up. I'm also disappointed with the name RNG this time. Give me something funny. Oh. Okay. Actually, I don't know. Does it? I'm not sure if that cutscene actually just like puts you in a yeah no puts you in a specific spot. Another quick one of those straight jumps to spice up the movement. All right, now we get to kill a bunch of enemies in another way. created the electricity and that's going to be our last uh, last look at that screen it just kind of careens people off and there's going to be some elevators so of course you know we're getting some good use out of them environmental deaths there we go Spawns are really annoying, because they, like, come in the middle of everything. Fisky. Not too bad. And that should be the end of it. Yeah. They kind of just sit behind you and can easily be neglected. Uh ones on those little raised platforms, so they tend to kind of be the last lingering lads. Alright, we got our anti, uh, anti sea bear circle here. This one works on apes. See if I can keep the circle going. <laughs> ah, a little bit ovalish, but worked anyway. Alrighty. Activate these little spawns. I really like this, um, quirky little guy, actually. They have a much more erratic um, movement and way of attacking you. But, of course, 
Yeah, we're not gonna get to see too much of him. Him being at the end of the game and this move essentially just auto winning. Magic, however, is quite scarce here, so you have to try and have those land as much as you can, just because, like, the initial impact does do decent damage. And their health bars being as long as they are. It can be kind of scrappy going between the two. How do I think this will be versus estimate? Um, probably under. Uh, I mean, what? We're probably like what an hour thirty in or something. And I think I've been playing decently, so. Yeah, we're getting to the, the final stretch where you actually get um, a little bit of platforming nonsense happening. Okay, that was that was funky. I guess one of them got cut, caught on the sides there or something. How erratic uh, it throws and how much it bashes them into the wall. It almost feels like a little worse having electricity upgraded here, but there's other times where it just like perfectly gets them. Alrighty. So this is a funky little skip that was known before. Making it happen consistently is weird and questionable. This, we just hug the the wall just like we want to hug Mommy Cinder's face right there. All right, there we go. See, nor it's difficult to have these enemies that are just sitting on the ground, like, actually, actually try to attack you. But by clinging to that, this should give us a nice little death. Is that? Uh, no, it's not going to be worth pace. If I stopped to show off again for potential out of bounds stuff, for like a minute, probably not too shabby though. It's always something funky with the. Uh, the spawns in this, so... Um... This room, and I don't know what it is. This guy joins the party real late. I suppose... You know what? That works out really nicely. I've still been toying with, like, how to approach that fight, so... That worked out. Alright! It, it is hype time! <laughs> I know this is very sudden, but we are going to be doing some serious jank. This is this is what is necessary to get over the absurd walls in this game. So, all right, yeah, you know what? I, maybe I'll just let it speak. No, okay. Come on, get in there. All right, so you spin up. A little I need the camera back out let's go <laughs> <laughs> oh shit that's so hard to commentate as it's happening it's just like so intense okay so there's a bunch of little pockets like behind that tower 
and you can barely squeeze between that tower first because you can push up the ledge by um, like spin attacking against the against the little slope. And then you get wedged in there, and normally it kicks Spyro out, but you can have a short period of time where it thinks uh, that you're grounded if you ground pound and you're like surrounded by walls that catch you, so you you land, right? You strike the ground or whatever. And then, you know, you get your double jump out and you can work your way to each of those individual um, little pockets. And then it turns out that the very top of those towers have the tiniest bit of just pure collision that you can stand on. And by doing that and then... <laughs> Even once you get up there, it's not quite done yet because you can actually just kind of fall out of bounds and there's no like death plane or anything, so you have to reset. Uh, and since it's like right on the very edge of the level, if you don't glide in enough, then you can fall out of bounds. But also if you glide in too much, you actually miss the opportunity to... Um, do anything. Also, uh, if you didn't have a good indicator for the Earth Shot's power, this is basically the same as the Ice King boss we fought earlier. Oh! My other best joke! Uh, the Ice King is from Adventure. That's, that's the joke. We didn't get to see him throw any Funny ice though. Oh, true. He does got that melted their plasma. Look. Dora Devil Seer. Nice, we got the quick kill. All right. And now a complimentary little elevator to uh, close this out almost. Uh, you get kind of too far away for a lot of um, gems to actually attract you here, so you kind of end up supplementing for uh, some gem drops off of the Earth Bomb on the higher rings. For now, oops. I'm gonna see if maybe we can get just like one or two pickups. Alright. Yeah, that's decent. Oh, wow. Yeah, managing the zero drop frames is pretty incredible. Yeah, there there isn't really too... Um, like, just looking at this arena, you know, with it being like a literal circle, you can't really get enemies uh, lumped up too well, so I tend to prefer just... Using the Fury attack here that I wasn't going to have a use for anyway, as opposed to just like slowly tickling each of them to death. There we go, that was pretty clean. But every one of those Earth shots you do, you do have to be slightly concerned for your magic in the end then you get up here and you need at least a little bit so that you can uh, you know fling stuff you have to awkwardly straddle between these couple of doors I was gonna say, there's normally one more larger lad. And then after this, hopefully we can uh, have one more other funny... <laughs> We're gonna try and have... Hold on. 
We're gonna try and have a boss die from fall damage. Maybe that's within Cinder's character. I don't know. It's very inconsistent. And, uh... If not, then we're able to make quick use of it. I know that uh, we're looking to start up uh, Season of Ice. I don't know how all three of them ended up buying me, but I won't complain. At least these ones are already targeting you on spawn. Is there anything else there? Oh, alright. What? There's just no <laughs> good way to do these rooms. Alrighty. After all is said and done, we can connect these with the side of the head like it's shown you want to avoid the whole time. Turns out there's a use for it. All right, let's see if we can make this last, last stupid thing work out. Mm, maybe, maybe. Got one more shot. Let's do it. It's not even like actually that much time saved. I think I have the strength to go on. Oh, come on. Our bosses in the series fun and creative. Um, I would say that there are some that are. They definitely do break up a lot of the monotony unless you know how to cheat. Which, when you do, it is so sad it must end that way. Okay. Oh, that's not time though. I should have maybe said something about that. Convexity. Oh, and now we get to do convexity, which is just like, at least to me, probably because, you know, I'm a nerd and just been playing within this engine for a while. Wow, okay. Cinder did talk. Here we go. Which, unfortunately, means another few seconds off, off my time. But uh, convexity in general... Like, this is actually kind of like a nice little platforming challenge, because there's like a whole lot of different paths you can take that are like relatively the same, so it almost feels like just like kind of like, gosh, I'm really tripping over my words. I have the driest mouth. <laughs> uh, it's okay, we can try again. It's like a make your own little platforming section. Okay. Nice double jump eat. I would say, uh, Let's keep as far as bosses go... Oh no, it's a little hard, because there are definitely some that end up making for unique ideas, like the steam train thing, but uh, just some of the, you know, the speed and numbers of that doesn't work out. 
Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what ones I like. I mean, I like the Stone Sentinel, since it's rather large and interactive, like, lumbering. You know, it hits you decently hard, but it's pretty easy to, like, maneuver around. Um, Cinder's pretty alright as well, but she might be a bit overtuned. Just like, with the flame sometimes chain locking you. Or the range on that. It's, it's much better, uh, and just like Eternal Knight has much more approachable tools. I'd say, like, with the Dragon Time and buffer system being a little bit smoother. And having uh, more distinct moves for your elements and everything. I don't know, I just find that a lot more responsive than having a projectile. So that kind of helps. Uh, Dawn? I'm trying to think of... I kind of forget that Dawn has bosses too. Anyway, a nice little quick cut across that corner. Target Cinder, just like, try to outspace him. Get a little bit of extra damage before she takes off. I was so happy when I realized I could just kind of strafe target. Because I had the hardest time, like, setting up Spyro to be, like, in a decent range where she would do her swipe attacks. Um, but just, like, stay put. You kind of have to do the same thing here, because... She tail whips you, then you really lose your mojo. Hello? Oh yeah, we're coming up on time in like... 30 seconds, I want to say. Just have to have a quick laser battle, as any good, uh... Fantasy trilogy thing should. Try to watch where her head's tilting. Dodge the other way. And there's time. It's time to unleash the true dragon within you. Time to stop the timer and unleash the true dragon within you. Oh. So yeah. I know it's not the most flashy thing in the world and everything, but it's definitely got some cool quirks. You can see even more of an Eternal Knight, and I'd like to maybe see more findings like it within this title. Hopefully that gave a nice little reprieve for everyone, and everyone's day continues to be dank. Uh, I don't want to hold up uh, the right. epic, so... Well, GG's Epicness. Uh, definitely a fun run, and again, one we haven't had in a while, so appreciate you coming through to do that for us. Um, are there any shoutouts you'd like to give, or do you want to tell people where they can find you and your uh, future runs? She is just like me. Um, sure. Um, so, wait. Dude, we yeah, so I have uh, I Twitch, uh, Epicness. Oh, yeah. Uh, I occasionally stream on there when I have the time. Um, I also have, I suppose, I'll put the Legend of Spire. Discord that I started recently since there's been a lot of renewed interest in just like digging and uh, trying to retune some of the boards on speedrun.com so I can hunt up a link to that real quick that I'll drop otherwise I'd like to uh, sorry no uh, go on 
I was gonna say that I'd like to thank, um, uh, let's see, what are their names? Zirla, uh, Dragon Soul, uh, Decidious, um, see, there, there, there's a whole bunch of others, but they already know who they are. They're in the Discord. They have been, uh, pushing me and, you know, having their own findings and everything, and that's been a very, uh, cathartic and refreshing experience to share that with somebody else, so... Uh, thanks to them, we they just find the invite, and you can get me the heck out of here. Alright, and coming up next, we have uh, CD Ramatron, who's going to be doing Season of Ice Any Percent, and I'm also done with my hosting duties for the day, so you'll get to listen to First Mabel introduce that next run. Um, so, everyone stay tuned, and we'll be right back with Season of Ice Any Percent. we still don't know what's happened to the Dark Master. No matter. 